In this tutorial, we'll take a look at some basic mouse inputs for Unity. Let's take a look. Find ourselves back in Unity once again. And first of all, of course, let's make a new scene by selecting the old one, pressing Ctrl D to duplicate it, and then we'll rename it 4-mouse inputs. Let's also open that up, double click, and then we have this open when we see it in the hierarchy. We will then make a new script. So right click on our scripts folder, C sharp script. This is also going to be called mouse inputs. After Unity has reloaded, let's rename this input game object to mouse inputs. And let's also remove the health script here, right clicking on it, remove component, and then let's add the mouse input script to it and double click to open. And we find ourselves in the mouse input script. So first of all, we will not need the start method. We will only be concerned with the update method. And now what is interesting, what can we do with a mouse? Well, first of all, we can click the left mouse button, the right mouse button, or the middle mouse button. So those are the three methods that we're going to take a look at. And luckily they're all also in the input class. So input.getMouseButtonDown, here we actually have to specify an integer. So this is the button. Let's start with zero in this case. And zero is going to be left click. So we can also put in a debug log so that we know what's happening here. So let's say mouse zero left click and then we can quickly copy this over so just select everything Control c Control v twice because what we want is a right click here as well so this is going to be the number one and this is mouse one right click and then this is middle mouse button or middle mouse click and then this is going to be the index two mouse two and then also middle mouse click. Now you can continue with this. So if you have more buttons on your mouse, then you can try three, four and five. However, it's not always advised to use this. Some people might just not have those buttons on their mouse. And also maybe from mouse to mouse, they're not always the same button. I would usually say not to use any index that is higher than two, maybe only if you have an options menu where the user can actually set their own keys. Right, so let's take a look at what this does. Right, starting the game and I will just click anywhere. And as you can see, left clicking gets me the mouse zero left click, right clicking gets me mouse one right click. And then if I press in the mouse wheel, middle mouse button clicking as well. And I can do this as often as I want and it just works totally fine. As an alternative, there are of course also the mouse button normal and mouse button up. So those are similar to the normal inputs. We had get key down. There's also get key up and get key. The down only returns once and the normal button, as you can see, it actually says this returns whether the given mouse button is held down. So this is one way we can for example, also do that. And then in the input, as you can see, if we type in mouse, there's a few other things, mouse position, mouse present and mouse scroll delta. So the scroll delta simply tells you what the actual scrolling does. I've not seen this used too often, but I'm sure that you can find a use case for this. Uh, what is, however, interesting is the mouse position, which we're going to take a look at now. So for the time being, we'll just log out the mouse position when we left click and let's just see what happens there. So we can remind ourselves, I've already started the game, but we can remind ourselves, you know, I put the mouse input at zero, zero, zero. So right in the middle of the screen. So if I click in the middle of the screen, I should get zero, zero, zero. And as you can see, I've gotten, I've gotten 1,300 and 733. So that's kind of weird. Why, why is that not zero, zero? The input.mouse position actually gets the mouse position from the width and the height of the actual screen. So in this case, this is in QHD. So this is 2,560 by 1440. And we're starting at the bottom left corner. So if I try to get it the most left corner, you can see it's almost zero, zero. If if I were to get the pixel at the very bottom of the screen, that would be zero, zero. And at the very top right of the screen, I should get, oh, I've actually gotten over a little bit. I would get 2560 times 1440. And as you can see, I'm actually a little bit above it because I've gone outside of this. It's still going to register that. So that's also kind of interesting to note. And if I were to change this to, for example, full HD, then it would immediately work. So then at the top here, it would be 1920 by 1080. So that's for the normal mouse position. I've just added a little bit of a comment here so that you can remind yourself, okay, what is the mouse position? But of course, there needs to be some way that we can change this, right? Of course there is. And for that, we're going to use the camera.main.screen to world point. And then we will simply pass in the mouse position. So the idea is that the mouse position itself gives you the screen coordinates. That makes sense, right? Zero, zero at the bottom, and then width times height at the very top. This is the screen 
point. And then now we want the world point. So the world point is the actual point that represents the game objects. So where I put my mouse inputs, empty game object was at 0, 0, 0. And if I click on that, this method basically converts those. I've also added a string here so that we can see what this is. And let's see what the result of that is. So now before, when we wanted to click in the middle of the screen, we were expecting 0, 0. Let's see. I'm almost there. Let's see. Maybe I can get it. 0 0.4. I'm not quite getting it. Oh, there. I'm almost there. Nope. Well, there it is. But it's pretty accurate. The only thing that might surprise you is this negative 10. Why is this negative 10 here? We have given it the main camera and the main camera actually resides at a negative 10. So if we were to, for example, change this to negative 16, then you can see that all of a sudden it becomes negative 16 because the Z coordinate is always taken from the camera that we have given it to calculate this. So if we go back, as you can see, we've given it the main camera and then called the screen to world point method from that main camera. And depending on where the main camera is in its Z position, that is the Z position that gets returned in this method. By thinking about this, so screen to world point to get the world coordinates. So the world coordinates that you can spawn game objects in, for example. And this is also what I've added here as a comment for you to think about. This would be an example if you wanted to spawn something below the mouse. So if I click and then I wanted to spawn something, this is what you would need. So this vector three is going to give you the position where you should spawn that game object. And then last but not least, we're going to take a look at the screen to viewport point. Let's see how that looks. The viewport is actually fairly easy to think about. So as you can see in the middle, it's 0 0.5, 0 0.5. At the very top right, it's one and one and at the bottom left, it's zero, zero. Not that accurate compared to the world points. It gets the job done, for example, something with UI would usually use the viewport point. There are, of course, always exceptions to this, but that's something where you would use that. And then one last time, I added some more comments here. So the idea is that this is sort of a normalized size of the window. So zero, zero at the bottom left and one, one at the top right corner, like I said, would probably be used when you're using some sort of UI system that would require this. Normally, you don't need this because the UI, if you use the Unity UI, it's usually handled for you, but still good to know. Right, and that was already it for the basic mouse inputs for Unity. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would of course appreciate a like from you and I'll see you next time. So yeah, 